So, does an aero helmet make you faster? The short answer is yes. The long answer is you might be sacrificing other things that are more important than the small aerodynamic benefit. So it's worth thinking about, but don't worry. I've got you guys covered. I've already overthought this and I did some real world tests, but real fast, before we get into the test results, I started a new channel with full race replays. It's called NCC Full Races. I've already uploaded a few and I'll be playing catch up from the 2019 season and I'll also be adding to it as we get into the 2020 race season, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. All right, so on to helmets. This was the most requested topic since my last video comparing aero carbon wheels. And I was also curious because I've acquired a bunch of helmets over the years and I've wondered if the aero ones actually make me faster. So I took the most aero road helmet I have, which is the race helmet I used in the 2019 season. It's the Cask Utopia and I pitted it against the most traditional vented helmet that I have, which is this Giro Aeon. Maybe it's Eon. And just like last time, I'm piggybacking these tests with some off-season intervals, so I went out to a flat, open course where I could do laps at a very constant power without having to touch the brakes, or be influenced by traffic, wind, or anything else that could affect the outcome of the tests. Each run was four and a half miles, or exactly three laps on this course, at a constant 310 watts with my aero cask helmet, and then repeated with my non-aero traditional vented gyro helmet. Each test was exactly the same distance, with an identical position on the bike, and I was pretty diligent about eliminating all variables, so the only difference between runs was the helmet switch. And to be sure I was getting accurate results, I repeated the test twice each time. So that's nine miles with the aero helmet, and then nine miles with the traditional vented helmet, and here are the results. With the non-aero helmet, I averaged 310 watts on both runs, and overall it took me 23 minutes and 13 seconds. And then with the aero helmet, same exact course, remember, 311 watts, it took me 23 minutes and 3 seconds, so 10 second savings. It's not much, but hey, there's no arguing that the aero helmet will in fact make you faster. But just like the wheels, the aero performance gain is not the end of the story. For example, if your aero helmet, let's say it's not as safe, it's not as comfortable, or if, um, if it makes you overheat, then the, the aero benefit just isn't worth it. Here's what it boils down to. Find a helmet that has modern safety features and fits you really well. If there's multiple options, Choose the, the more aero or lesser expensive one, depending on whether or not you think that uh, this aero benefit is, is worth your money. Speaking of which, let's compare the aero benefit of a race helmet to the race wheels video I made a couple weeks back. So you can see the, the time saved normalized over a one hour course is actually less for the helmet than the wheels. But keep in mind, the wheels cost about 10 times as much. As, uh, as the aero helmet does. So when you break it down by dollars spent per second saved, it actually makes a lot more sense to upgrade your helmet before your wheels. But let's look at getting aero because you can save all sorts of time by getting aero. Just like I talked about in my last video, you gotta get some core strength, you gotta get flexible, but that's where the real savings are at. And I did leave a row at the bottom open for clothing. That was something that a lot of you guys requested, something like, you know, skin suit versus normal kit, what the savings are there. So, uh, hey, if that's what you're interested in, leave a comment below. If it's something else, let me know. And as always, if you guys like this video, consider subscribing. If you want to see full races, go check out my other channel. See you guys at the next one.